Hello and welcome back to Wolf and Friends Gaming. I'm Wolf, and we had a little bit of a technical mishap on the channel. Uh, the first Guardians of the Galaxy video hopefully will be coming back up soon. I had to remove a uh, Hall and Oates song, uh, You Make My Dreams. Apparently, US can't listen to that for some reason. And also, apparently, Telltale just throws in music whenever they want to without giving a care. Which I can assume, because, you know, they have... Whatever, I'm not going to downplay them. But yeah, we're... I had to take out the song. So, there is... So, the Daryl Hall... The Hall and Oates song within the game has been taken out and should be coming back up shortly. And I don't want to redo this. There we go. So, also, I'm back, Wolf. Uh, finally finished up my first year of college, so now I should be able to be doing this on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. I say should be. So let's go to work. And I'm tired, because this is like 8 in the morning. No, not even 8. 7.43. Good evening. Huh? I didn't expect you today. I was waiting for you to call and say you wouldn't be coming or something. Also, I'm a little sick, so I might sneeze at some points. Plus, there's also dust everywhere around me. Things at the Apollo Bank are getting ugly, so that means more people will be looking for a drink. <laughs> you can take a break, you know. You're quite the hard worker. And the streets are not exactly safe right now. They've never been when you get down to it. And besides, I can't afford to not come with the bar closing soon. I wonder if any bar has used impending closure as a means of getting their employees to work. Seems like the total opposite would happen. Not to mention, I get bored out of my brains in my apartment, so I'd rather come here anyway. What did you say? Nothing important. Gil isn't back yet? Nope. I wouldn't worry too much about him, though. If you say so. That girl's still here? Yep, she was sleeping so peacefully, I felt bad about waking her up. So, would you mind doing that for me? Actually, yes, I mind. But you're the boss, and it's kind of my fault she's here in the first place. Sorry about that. Hey, young lady, sleep another owl and we'll have to start char charging you a motel fee. Uh, mm -hmm. Where am I? Oh, right. A shiny downtown bar. Let's see all my gears in place. And neither my pants nor my panties, shirt, or bra have been displaced. Oh, it's the flat bartender. Good morning. Good evening. Evening. Oh well, it's the best night or day of sleep I've had in quite some time. Sorry for all the trouble I may have caused you today or last night. Don't worry. You're so nice, flat bartender. <laughs> Thanks for taking care of me. Bye! Hello guys, gal. Streaming chance back in action with her batteries reloaded. Ah, uh, the mood it burns! I feel like I've just unleashed something terrible into the world. Come on, it's not that bad. Say, what's this bottle? A client gave it to me yesterday, a gift of sorts, I'm guessing. Oh, cool. It's some sort of rum. Rum. Nice. Want me to serve you a bit of it? Yeah, sure. Let's give it some rum. What the? Okay, that's so weird. Uh, rum. Grandpa booze. Here. All right. I'm gonna enjoy this in my office, thanks. Anytime. Okay, then. It's good. Time to serve me. Them to serve, mix, and change lives. Wait, that's not how it goes. No one here can retort. Man, if there's only the gill here. I just hope the restlessness in the streets doesn't lead to dangerous or weird types coming in here. I said good evening. <laughs> I have no idea how to do this voice. Oh shit, that was a record breaking jinx. Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? I'll have a blue fairy. Don't make a joke about becoming real. Don't make a joke about becoming real. On it. Let's give this some brain. A blue fairy. There you go. A non-alcoholic blue fairy. Nice. Yeah, this thing. So, um, how are you gonna... Uh, oh, you can grab stuff. Should have figured as much. You can drink stuff. And eat. I have the same system Lilim do. Can I ask you something, um, or miss... Call me Taylor. Just Taylor. And yes, he, like, you can't ask me anything. Okay, Taylor. You have to be the first person I've met that didn't go, Okay, just Taylor. Nah, too easy of a joke. You are a brain in a jar, right? I'm sure not a hologram of that, I'm sure. Yep, I'm a bonafide human brain in a jar. 
So how, why, what, does my handsomeness make you speechless? You're not something a girl sees every day, and that's saying quite a bit in these parts. Fear not, for I have a speech prepared for these situations. A speech. You're seeing one of the five great living bottled brains of the world. We are brains living in conditions that allow us to exist as any other humanoid creature. All while computers in our just scan our activities. In a slow but steady manner, we are helping the world understand the inner workings of nature's most complex computer. I'm guessing you prepared that after being asked the same question too many times, huh? Not of ex exasperation or anything like that, mind you. I just wanted to have something thoughtful prepared. Look, I even have a couple of pamphlets with me. You want one? Sure. Oh my gosh. I'm yawning every- it's like I always yawn during recordings, but then when I'm not recording, it's like, oh hey, it happens once every couple of hours. They were just, nope, every five minutes. What brings one of our world's five brains in jars to this place, though? Oh, I'm from around here, actually. I just wanted to take a walk for the first time in quite a bit of time. Have you come here before? Sadly, no, otherwise I'd remember a cute face like yours. Speaking of which, can I have your name? Um, it's Jill. Jill, that's a really cute name. Thank you. Say, weren't you scared of going outside today? Well, with the commotion around and all. It didn't stop you from coming here either, did it? Yeah, you're right. It's gonna take more than a cryptic but ominous news to stop me. You're awfully energetic, did you know that? Sorry, does that bother you? No, not at all. It's just that I figured a brain and jar wouldn't be so happy. While I was alive, my body got to a point where there wasn't much I could do. This new state of existence allows me to accomplish more than I ever could before. Plus, I'm doing something that'll help people in the long run. Wouldn't you be happy? I wonder. Do you want to make me happy, Jill? Depends on what it takes. Don't worry, just give me a beer. Alright, then yeah, I'll make you happy. One beer to make Taylor happy. Here, beer. Ah, yes, no matter what happens, beer is always good. It's interesting, though. Just yesterday, I was signed to a client about brain uploads. You were? Yeah. We were talking about how even if you upload your brain, you'd still be here. I've thought about that, too. Do you think that... Do you think the you in the cybernetic environment would feel like she was indeed transferred? Like, would she remember everything? Like, waking up someplace else and so on? Hmm, that's an interesting question. I was actually thinking earlier about being able to transfer someone's brain into a lilum. One of the brains is being used in such an experiment, actually. It can make a functional lilum. Unfortunately, the wiring and other stuff makes it look more creepy than anything. They aren't transferring his identity or anything, though, just wiring him to a body. Oh. You'd think someone would rather do that than float around exposing the jock. I have to admit, the whole brain thing does look creepy. But the body I'm telling you about is just uncanny looking. Speaking of uncanny, how did you feel when you saw yourself like this for the first time? It was quite a sh what, he can see? It was quite a shock, actually. It didn't last too long, though. I never was too attached to my body. Later in my life, that was almost literal. You know what the downside to this body is? I can't get drunk. If you want to call that a downside. If you wanted to drink alcohol for the taste, there are many alternatives. Drunkenness is part of the whole experience. Why, though? Lillian can get drunk with no problem. Yeah, but in their case, their brain's a computer attached to their body. Getting drunk causes their brains to reduce the input speed to their bodies. Depending upon the model, their drunk subroutine might throw in a different behavioral cycle, even. It's hard to get drunk when the whole point of you being in a jar is figuring out how exactly you work. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Jill. Oh, Alma. Just, oh, Alma. Where's the courtesy one would expect from plebeian bar staff? Welcome to Valhalla. What can I get you? Happy. Now when you put it that way. Why, hello there, beautiful. I am one of the five great brains in a jar. <laughs> Whoa! You hurt my feelings with that, darling. S sorry, you, you don't see talking disembodied brains every day. I mean, I did work a summer in Lilla Maintenance, but even then, they were talking heads. Oh, don't worry about it. At least you're not running or fainting. Your name was Alma, right? I'm Taylor. N nice to meet you, Taylor. Say, Alma, can I buy you a drink? 
So I only date people who are at least 50% organic and have at least one face. Hmm. I know just what to strive for then. <laughs> just kidding. Make me happy to make you happy by buying your drink. Does that bother you? I guess if Jill's the bartender, I don't have a problem. Really? Awesome. I'll pay for your next drink then. What will you have? I'll have a cobalt velvet. And you, Taylor? I'm fine, actually. You're gonna have me drink alone? I don't want to drink that much. Okay, then. Cobalt velvet. Hope you enjoy it. You know, you've been nicer to me these past minutes than at least three guys have been in the last year. Judging from the way you two talk, I'm guessing you've been a client here for a while now, right? Only for about half a year or so, if memory serves right. Really? One would think it's been longer. It feels like it's been longer. Shut up, you love me and you know it. So, you just started coming here and that was it? Well, the first time I came here, the other guy, speaking which, where's Pablo? <laughs> where's Pablo? Where's G Gillian? Archimedes? Dunno, adventuring or something. Anyways, the other guy served me the first time I came here. Nothing unusual there. The next time I showed up, Jill here was the one serving me and, I don't know, I feel like she just gets me. That says chemistry, we click. We click, she says. The fact that I feel more chemistry with her than with many other people is kind of sad, though. It's always good to see a nice friendship. Sadly, it's getting late, and I've got to go. Us brains and jars have a lot of things to do. I'll leave you two lovely ladies alone. See ya. Bye. Please come again. That tailor sure was nice. A bit weird at first, though. Apparently one of five brains being studied by scientists or something. There's a summary of it in this pamphlet. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yeah, I've heard of them before. Can't believe I've actually met one. Hey Alma, is your family really strict or something? Not particularly, no. Why? The other day you started mumbling something about numbers, not caring about what you do. About uh, 27, not caring if you have a Catholic wedding or not. Oh god, it's not the number thing. Yeah, my family isn't strict, per se, but my mom can be really abrasive. To her, the fact that I'm this old and not married or pregnant is a sign that I'm never gonna have kids. Never mind the fact that she already has three grandkids. I love her, but she can be well... Ugh. Ah, uh, yeah, I kinda get it. It also said the words, I was a blossoming woman, and I wasn't gonna stand for it. I'm talking about some 8th grade teacher... Yeah, that. You see, back when my body started developing, I got really shy. But at some point, something snapped within me. I wasn't feeling shy anymore. I felt powerful. My body felt like a new toy to me, one I was going to make sure to use. Of course, there were two problems with that idea. I was a teen, a horny teen, and I was surrounded by horny teens. I'm not even ashamed, I still stand by the core moral I held back then. But it's one of those memories that you look back to and become terrified of how reckless you were. I mean, I could have gotten pregnant, or worse. At that age, I was dressed in black and was obsessed with the cult of some. The worst I remember was being the butt of other kids' jokes. Well, you know how the old eight adage goes. Don't compare your life to others. You don't know what they've been through. No, I wasn't comparing, just wondering if some of that self-esteem thing would have helped me back then. Speaking of family, today I came because I needed a break from everything that's been going on with them. Do you live with them? No, but Evita and Bernie do, not to mention I visit them almost every day. Anyway, my second eldest sister, Diana, just separated from her husband. It's not even been a week, but she's already got some other guy in her bed. She left her kid with her husband's parents and pretty much forgot about them. Never mind the fact that they need to go to school and all that. Damn. Diana's life has always been messy, but these days she's really been making it big. She wants time for herself to live her life. She didn't think about that when she married the guy at 20. She didn't think about that when she, when marrying a guy she had only known for like 3 months. You should take your own advice. Hey, I'd never marry someone who could, cut, who could catch my attention so quickly, okay? Sure, there was, there was that one time when it almost happened, but I blame the damn stadium kiss cam. Kiss cam? 
I was going out with a guy, my little sister introduced me. Your little sister introduced you to a guy, okay. Kinda sad. Seems he was her friend's brother or something. We went out for a couple of times and he invited me to a basketball game. The mood was nice, but then later the kiss camp focused on us and instead of kissing me, he proposed. I almost got caught in the mood and accepted. Huh? So take it you rejected him in a stadium on the fucking kiss cam. We went out for like three weeks. I don't know, maybe he wanted to get in my pants with the old sex on the wedding night la line. But I honest to god can't understand why he thought it would be a good idea. That sounds too convoluted, you know? Proposing and waiting for the wedding night just for sex. Never underestimate the lengths of a man is, of a man is willing to go to get you in their bed. I've seen more convoluted plots over the years. I'm feeling tempted to ask, but I'll pass. Want anything else? Hmm, what's that bottle? Oh yeah, it's just some rum a client gave me yesterday. A gift? What'd you do? A good enough service, I'm guessing. Cassie K. Huh, interesting name. What does it mean? Cassie K is the name of the chieftain in some native tribes. I see. Do you want me to serve you some of this? I'll pass. I don't have too many good memories where rum's involved. Give me a fringe weaver instead, will you? Alright. Wonder what's up with her and rum. But anyways, I'll just give her a fringe weaver. No, this is the one this is the one time I'm going to that I'm going to break away from it. I mean other than the one that's the oh yeah, I need an eighty dollar drink. Look through the entire thing for eighty dollars. Now, I'm g I wanna know what her and rum is. Very funny. You wanna see me take my clothes off while complaining that global warming's a bitch? But what now? What I mean is, I won't drink this. Then excuse me while I take him off your hands! <laughs> oh my gosh, Dana. Alright, now's my turn to ask questions. About what? What kind of family is your family? Well, the, uh, here is your friend we've... <laughs> I'm an only child. My mom and my dad split amic amicably. My mom is a violinist, so she was always away from home with the orchestra. I spent most of my time with my dad, my aunt, and my grandpa. Aside from that, I'd say my childhood was quite uneventful. Huh? Didn't you get something like your mom's artistic vein or something? I played the violin until I was around 16, I think. What made you stop? I don't know, I just kind of said, that's it, one day and stopped. What about cousins or the rest of your family? I see very little of them, actually. Mainly because my dad moved away from most of them, unless my mom's family lived in France to boot. So your mom's French? Yep. Can you speak French? I can't speak French. Ooh, what does that mean? <laughs> Rubbish. I don't know. I can't speak French. I did try, though, but college started and I stopped taking classes. Funny thing, I actually have a cousin from my mom's side that lives close by. But it'll be hard-pressed to make me spot him in a crowd. You're kind of lucky, you know? All of my mom's side of the family lives here. The chances of me meeting someone I'm related to on the street are ridiculously high. But yeah, that's the prime of my family. Nothing too interesting, sadly. Your mom's a French violinist, and you call that uninteresting. I'm wondering if your family has ever made a fuss about you being a hacker. Hacker makes it sound too exotic. It's like if I called you a mixologist. Please don't ever. Sounds like some <laughs> sounds like something somebody would say to make bartender sound sophisticated. See? I mean, hacker is a good way to summarize it, but it's not the best. I'm a security consultant. People want to find flaws in the security of their systems, and I do my best to pinpoint where it breaks. Oh, so they're like, uh, our mine. The ones that ha have hijacked big YouTubers just to test their security. Be it Glitch City or s anywhere else in the world, they need security, I'm their woman. You've told quite a few stories about cracking into databases to retrieve info like some sort of mercenary, though. That doesn't change the fact that hacker is not the best term to use. Makes the whole thing sound illegal when it's actually an honest job. Didn't you tell me once you- Didn't you tell me you once secured some incriminating pics on a guy's cell phone? A mostly honest job, sheesh. What made you become a hacker, by the way? I've always been a sucker for puzzles. Even as a kid, I always find a- I've always had a Sudoku or crossword with me. 
But at some point, they started feeling kind of samey. So when I started college, I took a course on system security. It felt like the kind of puzzle I was looking for. I mean, there are all kinds of things involved in breaching net security. You need to attack the stuff from different angles, and it's something that's always evolving. The whole point of everything is to strengthen security. Every time you think you've got the gist of it, they change everything. So it's kind of like an always evolving puzzle. A puzzle I help make harder at that. Huh? I didn't think about it that way. It is less action-y than what movies make it up to be, though. No real-time frantic typing, nothing like that. Still, seeing my code break through something, it's an amazing feeling. Will you have anything else? Hmm. I'll have a classy drink. Any classy drink. Here goes nothing. Well, let's give her some rum. Nah. Uh, let's, if we're gonna look for classy, only one place to go. Here you are. Yep, just what I needed. Thanks. Says so, Joe. What's the worst that could happen if you don't get your drinks right? To, if you don't get your drinks right. Well, people have the right to not give me money. If they don't pay for it, I don't get my bonus. No bonus means less money and no tips, which doesn't help because I have to pay bills. Oh, I see. Do you have to make an effort to pay your bills? Nope. You have no idea how much I hate you right now. Well, my job pays pretty well, and I'm not the kind to spend too much on things other than food and bills. Maybe maintenance on my hands and new equipment, but aside from that... Oh, I know. If you have trouble with your bills, why not live with me? We could be roommates. Done now. Moving my stuff through the stairs because the elevator just broke. <laughs> Big Bang Theory reference. Having to move my liquor collection. Never mind the fact that my cat's a shut and that got very upset the one time I moved some furniture around. The idea of moving just gives me a headache. You shouldn't take things so seriously when I say them, you know. I don't, but I've thought about it before. Now I need some air. I'm gonna take my break. You wanna come? Are you inviting me to the back of the bar? You should be inviting me to dinner first. Every minute you waste making jokes is time taken for away from my break. Fine, let's go. Boss, I'm taking my break. Call me if anyone comes in. Sure, sure. And that's the break. Okay, so while we're on break, I guess this is the perfect time to, I guess, make a recording split. Where this will be one episode, and everything else will be another episode. So for all you first episode viewers, hope you all have a good day, and I'll see all of you later. Bye bye